Hey everyone, welcome to today's tutorial on internationalization with Next.js 13. Are you ready to take your website to a global audience? If so, you're in the right place. Internationalization, often abbreviated as I18N, is the art of making your software accessible to users from all around the world. It's about speaking their language, both linguistically and culturally. The best part? You don't need to mess with your source code. We'll show you how to make your site inclusive and accessible to a broader audience. Next.js 13 has undergone some significant changes in how it handles internationalization. The old way of handling routing is now history. The power has shifted to the developer and we will show you how to use it. Today, we'll guide you through creating French and English versions of your website. We have a landing page and a home page. We are using the Next.js 13 app router, which means we have both server and client components. In this tutorial, the landing page will be rendered on the server, while the home page will be on the client side. More on that later. Let's roll up our sleeves and see how this magic happens in the code. Inside the app directory, we've set up a special folder called local, where we've copied all our routes. Here, we have the landing page with a layout that includes a specific nav bar for this page. And there's the home page, also with its layout and nav bar. To handle translation, we'll use a package called Next International. You can install it with a simple command, pmpm add Next International. Also, make sure your TES config JSON file has strict set to true for the best developer experience. With Next International onboard, you can now format dates, numbers, and currencies according to the user's locale. It's your go-to tool for translating your app's text content into different languages. Inside the root directory, let's create a folder named locales, which should not be confused with the folder we mentioned earlier. Inside locales, we'll have a file for each language our website needs to support. Each file will export an object with all the variables for the text we want to translate. To handle client-side component translation, we'll need some hooks. Let's create a client file for that purpose. and we'll also create a server file to do the same for server-side component translation.
don't forget to create a middleware.ts file at the project's root level. This middleware will handle redirecting users to the correct locale, whether it's French or English. At the end of the process, we'll use a matcher that employs a regular expression pattern to match any string that does not contain API, static, or any string containing a period. Before we dive into translation, let's add a local switcher. This will enable users to switch between English and French. Let's integrate the switcher into our navigation bars. To make our site truly multilingual, we are using the scoped Use Internationalization hook for client components. The scoped hook will return a specific scope. If you want to get more than one scope, let's say values for the landing page scope and values for the home page scope, you can use the Use I18N hook that returns all object keys. This helps us avoid duplicating the scope when making more than one call. To handle translation, replace the text on your pages with variables. Since we're using the Next.js app router, remember to add Use Client to the client components. By default, all components are server components. For server components, use the scoped Get Internationalization function to get a specific scope. The same applies here. You can return all object keys with the getI18n function to avoid scope duplication.
For client components, wrap the lowest parts of your app with the internationalization client provider inside a layout. That's all you need to do. Let's see the result. As you can see, the translation is handled seamlessly. That's a wrap for today's tutorial on internationalization in Next.js 13. The possibilities are endless when it comes to languages. Just add your translations to the locales folder and tweak the client, server, and the middleware files. No code changes are needed. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more coding tutorials. Together, we'll make the web a more inclusive place. Thanks for watching.